What's up, people? I'm back doing two videos today. I wanted to kind of let my Transformers video go, like, because I felt like it was getting really good views, and I didn't want to fuck it up by uploading another video. That probably would have took all night to upload anyway, so I just figured I'll just do this one today. And I'm still going to do Starship Troopers later, so, um, but today, or right now, I'm reviewing... We're continuing on with the Bond movies. We're on the 15th one. As I was looking up on Wikipedia, we're on the 15th Bond movie. I can't believe I've done 15 Bond movies. Well, maybe 14, because I think I missed one. But um, but still, that's like a lot. <laughs> like, thinking about it, like, holy shit, we're on fucking number 15. But overall, um, we're, di we're doing Living Daylight. We're doing the two um, Timothy Dalton ones. And this is the one, I'll admit, be honest, I don't really remember. I'm, I remember License to Kill for the most part. I don't remember this one. And re-watching it, it was almost like basically watching it with fresh eyes. I really liked it. I dug the tone. It has like this action, espionage feel. Like, I mean, all Bond's supposed to have like the espionage feel. But this one, like, it's like it almost went back to its roots, right? Um... I really like Timothy Dalton as Bond. I think he's underrated. I think it's a case if he had gotten more movies... I think he would have been a good mod because just from the, the the scenes in this, he he had the swagger. I thought he had the charisma down. He had the mannerisms down. Yeah, he leans a bit more into the action, but I still feel like he has the like shaken, not stirred like charisma about him. Like I don't feel like he's just an action dude. So overall, really like Dalton. You know, it sucks um, that like. He only got two movies. I think it's a case, like, look at Moore. Look at Brosnan, Connery. Like, we love those Bonds because they have multiple movies, especially Connery. But, like, you know, I think Brosnan had, like, three or four because he had GoldenEye. He had fucking Tomorrow Never Dies. I think there's a World Is Not Enough. Oh, four, yeah, because then he had Die Another Day. So he had four movies. I think Connery had, like, a lot if you include Never Say Never Again. So it's like, um, so it's like, I think if Dalton got a couple more movies, I think he would have been a great Bond. I just think it's a case you only get two movies. Granted, I've seen some people say License to Kill is their favorite Bond, so. But, uh, this one I really like. The premise pretty much is Bond is, um, ordered to, to kill this guy Pushkin so they can well like war between the west because it's you know it's 87 so you still have the soviet union kind of basically still like the cold war so he because um he has to help this guy in the beginning of the movie i'm trying to remember the character's name you don't see a lot of this character he um where they think because he's they think you know he's supposed to get killed because kara who's the bond girl of the movie is sent to kill him, but clearly isn't a, a licensed assassin, so Bond doesn't kill her. So Bond is then ordered to kill Pushkin, so he can quell this war. And then Koskov, who's like the real villain of the movie. I think that's like, if I had one criticism, I think this movie is... they, the, Yeah, Koskov's the villain, but he doesn't feel like the main villain. He just is always oh, a villain of the movie. And only in like the, the end, when Bond confronts him, is does he really feel like the main villain. Because uh, there's like the this blonde dude that works from that attacks um the the attacks MI six which that was a cool sequence like the, the action is great I think easily the best thing about this movie is the action like they really like I love the opening sled scene I I'm not gonna lie I love it um we're not the yeah it was in, no it wasn't the opening it was in um when he and Kara were escaping the Russians or KGB. <clears throat> um, I like the different settings. Um, Koskov, I think if they just made him the sole villain, none of this espionage, like they kind of take out like the death to spy subplot. I felt like there was in the trying to frame Pushkin as the villain, I would have wrote that out of the movie. I think that would be my only tweak. Because Bond, one of the best things about these movies is the villain. And it, I mean, it's cool seeing Felix Leiter again. I'm cool with Monty Penny being recast because, I mean, it makes sense. New Bond, you got to have a new Monty Penny. So, um, I would have been fine 
if they uh, if they cut that out. I just think you needed a villain, like a main villain, to focus on, and I felt like Koskoff just wasn't it. He didn't feel like a main villain to me. He just felt like a bad guy. So we get the reveal that he he's there because he's embezzling money, and he's trying to frame Pushkin so he can get Pushkin off his back, and basically that's why he's trying to bond kill him. Um, I love the cello sniper. But there's even a scene they don't. I don't, I don't think they actually end up using this weapon, but it was basically a boombox because it, it was 1987. This is around when everyone was just carrying boomboxes, so like they carry it in that style. It actually is like a rocket launcher. It was like in the scene where you see like all the tech and shit. I fucking love that sequence. Um, I love the opening song. But overall, I, li I like it. I think the only thing is I had trim the, the ending down a bit. I think it there was points where I'm like, this could have ended. And it just kept going. At times, I'm like, oh, it's still going. So I think the ending, I would have tightened it up a smidge. But aside from that, I, I really like this one. I definitely recommend it. Dalton's a good Bond. I really think he does. He does the action great. He still has those mannerisms. I just think, unfortunately, it's just he didn't get enough movies. He just got like two movies and then that's it. So, But it is what it is. Dalton's great. Um, I love him in Hot Fuzz. So it's to go back and actually see him as Bond. Like This is like the first time in a while. I'll admit, his movies, minus License to Kill. And even then, I, I only remember certain parts. I don't remember like the whole movie like that. I think I remember a chunk of the movie, but I don't. These, the, even as a kid, I didn't watch the Dalton ones a lot. I mainly kind of stuck to mainly certain Bonds. Like, even Lazenby's Honor Majesty's Secret Service didn't watch a lot either. So, I, and if I did watch the Dalton one, it was mainly licensed to go just because of the name. But this one, rewatching it, it's it's a fun one. I think the ending, like I said, could have been tightened up and maybe make Koskov more of the main villain and give him, like, Maybe not over the top land, but just something of that nature. Just because so he could feel like the main villain. He didn't feel like the big bad in this movie. He just didn't. Not until the end where Bond goes back to kill him. But but overall, I'd give this movie an 8 out of, 8.5 out of 10. I, I really liked it. The action is great. It knows what it is. Um, Dalton's a good Bond. So we'll see it was uh license to kill next week and i will it will be on tuesday next week i'll bring it back to tuesday next week for sure um i just had to do it this week but yeah other than that uh let's get started later tonight um starship troopers review which i can't wait i i've been i figure why not you know um a lot of people are playing that new starship troopers game and i've been listening to the the audiobook which the book is so fucking different than the movie. It's, like, totally different. Like, the book is straight up more serious. Like, I, I mean, I'm cool with both. And I haven't watched the first Star Trek, Starship Troopers, Jesus fucking Christ, Star Trek, Starship Troopers in a while. And everyone's playing that game, so I figured, why not start? And there's only three movies, and I don't remember the sequels at all. Like, I only really, really remember the first one, so why not? We have a franchise to dive into, so I'll be doing that. I'll do the first one later, but, uh, yeah, let's get started. sequence <laughs> Who um, is there to assassinate someone else? 
But when Bond is on the verge of assassinating her, you can tell she's not an experienced assassin. So he decides not to kill her. He shoots the gun. <coughs> then the, the yeah, that uh, Bond um, has that guy, helps that guy escape through. And in MI6 headquarters, um, a KGB agent um, shows up and we get a cool, I love this sequence, just kind of starts fucking shit up. And they take the guy. We get the reveal that he's actually been working for Koskov. And they're trying to frame Pushkin so they can kill him. So Bond is then... This is where we see the new Monty Penny and a lot of the new tech. The fucking boombox rocket launcher was hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. Kind of wish he used it. Kind of wish he used it in at least in a scene during a battle. But I get it. It was just probably just to be a funny scene. It was probably not like supposed to be an actual... like weapon to be used it was just probably for a cool funny scene just in the movie so that's fun so he then um starts following kara who we find out is uh the kgb's after her so he poses as a a friend of uh of uh koskov and helps her escape we get an escape scene kind of get a sled scene a little bit um, and the car he uses in this movie is fucking awesome. Like, the the, the missiles, he was just kind of shooting at people. Even the car itself, when the, the enemy was getting, the KGB guys were getting close, just blows up. Yeah. I love the tech in these movies. So, Bond and then her go to, uh, um, to confront, uh, Pushkin. And this is where we find out that that Koskov's actually the actual bad guy of the movie, in that the guy who supposedly got captured by the KGB is actually working with him. So it's like, oh, okay. But I just, I felt like Koskov just didn't really have really an impact. Like, even, like, the, the it was just more in general the KGB, because um, throughout the movie, a bunch of spies are getting killed, killed. There's a saying I cannot pronounce it, but basically it just means, it means death to spies. I'll just, I, can, I know the translation, death spies. So, and I guess she's one of them. So, you know, we get a bunch of action seeds. <coughs> Bond starts to fall for her. She wants to get Pushkin so bad because Bod secretly starts working with him <coughs> because Pushkin tells him the truth. <coughs> but uh, so Kara gets confront uh, convinced by Koskov to drug Bond so that that basically so Koskov can help her get Pushkin. <coughs> I'll say this though: the movie's pacing. It's just really only the ending that I felt like dragged a little. But most of the movie, I felt like was pretty action heavy. I didn't feel bored once. <coughs> so Bond and her get caged. Um, they escape. They help a guy named um Cop Cameron, who's the leader of a of like this rebel group in um the Middle East. So we find out that Koskov is gonna sell opioids so he can basically control. Um, I did like that plot. I like the, you know, don't get me wrong. I like the over the top plot sometimes where the villain like wants to destroy the world with like a missile or something crazy like that. But I'm kind of cool with this. Just it's just something simple. He wants to sell drugs, you know, so he can have control. Simple, like nothing too crazy, nothing too over the top. Koskov's thing is more personal gain than like just destroying the world, right? You know, kind of cool with that occasionally in a Bond movie. <laughs> Um, so, he then goes, um, initially, um, he wants to go alone, but Kara convinces him to let him go along. Um, they then plant a bomb in the plane, 
um, that's carrying like all the opioids and stuff ends up getting destroyed. You know, the plane ends up getting getting destroyed with a bomb. Then they celebrate. But Bond then tells Kara that he's going back for Costco. Like to kill him. If she doesn't want him to go, you don't <coughs> this at this point in the movie they clearly <coughs> were starting to like fall <coughs> Kara's an alright character. <coughs> no, I thought the cello case <coughs> with the sniper that she had was pretty awesome. I thought that was a cool little look. Like, that's a cool way to be discreet. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, so Bond then says, hey, I'll, <coughs> I'll make my way, he'll make his way back to her. <coughs> he just has to do this thing. So with the help of Felix Leiter, who it was cool that they brought Leiter back. I love the little characters like Leiter, Q, <coughs> Monty, Penny, like these little characters that you see throughout like every Bond movie, they always have them. <coughs> and it's awesome. <coughs> so Leiter helps him infiltrate Koskoff's house. And then uh, Bond confronts Koskoff, tells him about like his shipments destroyed, <coughs> that his plan didn't work. But Koskoff knows he's there to kill him, so we get a shootout. And Koskoff has this gun, I guess, that has, like, this thing on its, like, body armor. It's weird. It was weird looking, I'm not gonna lie. It looked like a fucking... <coughs> he just took a mirror and just stopped, put it on top of a gun, but whatever. But, uh, because there's a weapon that can... Um, earlier in the movie, Q shows them, a, like, a thing. It's, like, almost like a keychain. It looks like a, like a key, like a car key thing. He puts it on a thing, and if you make a certain sound it triggers and it causes like basically an explosion. So Bond uses that to kill Koskoff. Um and then Pushkin comes and um, you know, kinda you know, they have a bit of final words. Then Bond goes to uh I think Vienna or London, one of those. Cause he sees uh her perf uh Kara perform and then she goes backstage and Bond's there and like they kiss. So you have that classic ending of Bond hooking up with a chick. I like this movie, man. It, it's it's definitely more action, but I, I really like it. I think Dalton is a good Bond. I just, you know, say it again, I he just needed more movies. I think it's a case if you just gave him maybe two or three more movies, I think he could have been a really good Bond. Um, I like the action in it. Koskoff's an okay bad guy. I just think maybe he needed to have a bit of a stronger presence and i just don't think he really had it but besides that, i liked his plan i liked it wasn't as much as i love the over the top plans it's kind of cool sometimes where back i just it's something simple he just wants to have control and he thinks it's a, another way to make money that's all like now they do crazy <laughs> i love the music i love the the atmosphere <coughs> and Kara, <coughs> I thought Kara and Bond had that decent chemistry <coughs> together. Like I felt like every scene together, like they actually felt like they were in love. <coughs> so I can't wait to watch License to Kill on. It will be on Tuesday. Latest would probably be like a win, like a situation like this. If I don't do it Tuesday night, it'll be like on a Wednesday morning. <coughs> but I'll try to do it Tuesday night for sure. So back to its normal night. It was just this week I had to kind of alter it. But <coughs> overall, I love this movie. 8.5 out of 10. It's one of my favorite Bonds. And the fact that this is the 15th one and it's still good is kind of crazy. You know? 15 movies. And any other franchise, even by this point in 87, probably would have been shit. But they, they, they just kept the course because they just kept the tone consistent. You know, let Bond be a badass, a suave, badass. You know, flirts with women, have some cool action scenes, cool tech. Um, uh, I would say another element is definitely a good bad guy. I mean, look at Goldfinger. Um, even Dr. No. Like, I thought Dr. No was a good bad guy, too. So, Or, um, fuck it. Uh, you got fucking 
Blofeld. Blofeld, that's another one. Like, you, you gotta have good bad guys, so. But yeah, th that's, you just need certain elements, and I think if you have that, or at least a couple of them, maybe you don't have one, but you have a lot of them, you have a good Bond film. And I thought this one had it, so yeah. But, uh, yeah, guys, um, later, um, Starship Troopers, can't wait to review it. You know, you're doing, I'm doing my part. I just, iconic line. It's just, and it's, I, they played this movie a lot on the sci-fi channel. This and like three, I think the first three, they pretty much played on the sci-fi channel all the time. That's how I always watched it. You know, it was these guys just killing giant bugs. You know, that's cool. So, and it gave me a little bit of Aliens vibes just because like the armor, or, you know, like the, the Marines kind of feel to them. So, but uh, yeah, I'll be talking about that later tonight. I promise that will be tonight because I, I definitely want to talk about that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, other than that, um, go see, uh, Living, uh, Living Daylights if you haven't. It's good. If you haven't seen the Dalton ones, I would recommend them. I definitely would say License to Kill is great. I definitely remember that one being great. I would have put it on my 89 list, but I hadn't rewatched it. You know, as you all know, with the, the, those lists, I try to watch, do movies for the most part that I at least actively watch and haven't actively watched the Bond movie in a long ass time. So I just, I felt like it would have been dishonest to put it on my list because I would watch it like that. But I do remember it being really good. But this one was good too, so. But uh, yeah, I'm going to cheers out and I'll talk to y'all later. Alright. Peace. <coughs> <coughs>